that's a tremendous looking trophy. Welcome to number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name's Tim Blight. Joining me, as always, Ashley Hobley. Hey, you doing? Excited to be here and talking about what's on the horizon for PlayStation. That's a pun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Good But also job. what's right in front of us right now, so it's not that far. Yeah. Very good. Literal horizon. Uh, yeah. Today in the trophy cabinet, platinum trophy, horizon, DLC's out. Yay! <laughs> it has caused no controversy. No. Amongst any parts of the internet for no reasons. At all. I feel like at this stage, here's here's my question straight off the bat. I know you haven't finished this. I saw you started it or whatever, right? Yes. I finished it. Have you seen the the at this stage is the is discussing why the game's getting review bombs are in, in a in a few minutes? Is that even a spoiler? I feel like it's just been plastered all over the internet. I haven't really seen anything. All I've saw is the Metacritic score was you know, uh, you know so tiny. Or had been bombed, review bombed, or whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. But Horizon Burning Shores, or Horizon Forbidden yeah. West Burning Shores, the DLC slash expa- uh, expansion for the game is out. It costs 30 bucks, I think. Is that yeah? Yeah. 30 bucks uh, in it. And this is, this is the other part. So I was saying to you the other day that. I feel like the marketing they were trying to keep like I don't know the story like all secretive, but they like. I, yeah. I don't know. Any time they showed it, it was like very general gameplay, uh, just Aloy flying around Los Angeles that's uh, been submerged. Yeah, they and were like, it. "Oh, Aloy, like- Aloy has to go to Los Angeles for reasons." Yeah, which I feel I like was from weird. a perspective of the storyline very much being set after the the game. And to be clear, I guess, I guess we're going to be spoiling Horizon Forbidden West when we're doing this discussion. Yeah, you can't yeah. you can't discuss the DLC at all without Well that's the thing. You can't talk you can't really show the gameplay the story of the game without spoiling the game, you know? I guess that's fair. So uh but the story for this is that I do some very quick between her and Silas at the start, Aloy and Silas are like, oh, you know, like maps, three plus one because 13. <laughs> there was this many. We got to the... carry the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was this many Zenith members. Oh, shit, but we miscounted them. Anyway, long story short, there's one left, and this guy's over in Los Angeles. Better go hunting down. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> hmm. It's sort of, they very much are like, they're like, oh, yeah, remember how you, you said there was 13, but there was actually 14 and stuff. And then I went back and like Googled. Like how many was ever listed, and they're like, nah, they just totally were like, man, there was what there was an extra one. There was, but just so you never saw him, he was never yeah. like mentioned or in any of the group pictures <laughs> or anything like that. But he is, he's the he's the fourteenth member of yeah, organization he was like, thirteen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this plan's not going to work. I'm going to go do my own thing. Yeah. So, yeah, the the DLC is about. Uh, it's still, you know, Nemesis is coming, shit's fucked, but let's go track down this last Far Zenith member from Los Angeles because he may have information and ways in which to help us stop Nemesis before it gets to Earth. So, because my worry coming into this DLC was the main game ends with such a, holy shit, we need to like start preparing for war or ways to protect ourselves because mm. this mass like sort of, planet destroyer things coming for us the whole reason that these far zenith members were running back to earth anyway um it seemed weird to like just do a side story but the side story is well i need this guy for his information to help us with that thing so i was like all right that's that's fair enough yeah um it takes about it's i can't remember what i said i think i think as you'd probably finish the dlc in a couple of hours i think i did it like four or five hours something yeah. like that i did a couple did one of each of the sort of side activities there's a couple of new ones in here there's one where you like sort of fly around these uh you fly around this game has a lot of flying in it because of course you don't get the the ability to ride the flying mounts until the late well there's a lot of water the <laughs> yeah and there's a lot of water in this 
But the cool thing is that you also, and this isn't a spoiler because it's in the trailer for the game, but you can eventually unlock on this the ability to ride one of the, the new, um, well, they call them machines, yeah. Machines in this game, which is a flying one, but it also can go underwater. <gasps> so cool. you can like dive up and down between the water and stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of, you can go dive into the water and fly really high up in the, the sky. This game has like, this map isn't massive, but it has, I guess, the, you know, it's up and down sort of thing. Um, verticality. Verticality to it, so yeah. Um, and then the main ga- the main of a character that's introduced for this DLC is... Seika. Can- Seika, um, who's this part of the... Quinn. What's that? The Quinn, yeah, which is like the main tribe sort of people from... Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, the Forbidden, but from B- Forbidden West, they were like one of the main people introduced and they stood out amongst everyone else because they were a group who actually used um, Echoes or whatever they're called. Uh, yeah. I, f- I forget old terminology no. for old things. But the, the things that Aloy uses to see the the stuff around her and, and, you know, so she can actually see the technology and all that sort of stuff. Um, so they, they stood out for that sort of fact. What? How much have you played? What are you thinking so far? Is it just more I'm Horizon? I'm up to... They've just discovered the Ascension and what the plan is. Now we're going to go to a second tower. Mm. So I think I'm reasonably far along in the yeah, main story quest. You're getting there. It's fun. I mean, it's it's cool to jump back in Horizon. Um, I was surprised how quickly I caught was able to catch back up with the gameplay. Like, mm. oh, that was my major concern going in. It's like, I don't know. I'm going to go in and I'm not going to remember how to put any of the buttons to. Uh, but, like, my character was, like, at the top end of the map and I had to fly all the way to the other end to, to meet up with Silence. And it was, um, I, like, fast dropped travel. in on, yeah. It was fast Tra- I forgot there's a fast travel <laughs> at, at camps, at campsites. I was like trying to fast travel straight away. I'm like, oh, you need to buy this pack or whatever. I'm like, no. yeah. Uh, but like, I dropped in on an outpost and like wiped out a bunch of people. I'm like, oh yeah, this is how you play the game. So I was helpful in that regard. Um, yeah, I mean, the new section looks very pretty. Um, there's some fun, you know, puzzle. Lots of fun little puzzles and like blisters and stuff like that uh there's a bunch of like new abilities that she get it seems like she's getting like uh lots of grappling to your flying creature it'll get weapons to shoot from your flying creature uh mm. lots of better weapons and gear that you can get here so i guess if you get it here and then you can go back and clean up even easier through the main map so yeah I, i'm enjoying it so far i mean uh am i likely to be playing it for very long probably not because uh, there's, you know, some other games on the horizon, uh, pun not intended. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's a fun little return to this world. And, like, I'm enjoying the story. You know, Zek is a fun character. And, like, uh, it's an interesting issue that Aloy is having with her where uh, she's kind of trying to keep Nemesis a secret. <laughs> mm. Because how do you explain that to people? <laughs> I guess that, which is kind of the conundrum leading into the next potential game of how do we get su- support for pe- from people when we have to explain what the actual so threat much. is? It's like, yeah, it's pretty interesting, I guess, in that regard. Yeah. Well, the thing that helps with her and sort of makes it easier as a game, like for Aloy to talk to, even though she's keeping that part secret, is. All the other characters in the game usually are still like they've the her companions in different parts are they're not tech savvy at all. They're not even they like don't know what of, a focus is. Focus, there we go. <laughs> um, they don't have a focus, they don't understand that they you know, they they still very much believe in this, you know, in old gods and all this. Like mm. at least with her, it's Aloy is trying to keep it a secret, but she's still able to talk to her like a, I guess, more of a normal person. Yep. Whereas I do feel like a lot of the companions 
especially in the main game when you're rec- the core game when you're recruiting them you always have that same scene where she hands them a, a focus and i think i put some line in my review i was like it's like the a companion entering the tardis for the first time they all like oh my god look at all the fucking lights and shit i can see like every single yeah. time you know the focus scene yeah um but yeah it's it's not mind blowing but that's fine like it's just more like if you liked Horizon, hey, here's more Horizon. Mm. Enjoy. Yeah, I, I definitely do feel like it's not unnecessary though, and if it does feel like a an epilogue to the game in a way that you should play it prior to the inevitable third game, and I would be highly surprised if some characters and elements of this don't carry yeah. forward. I think the, I asked you on Arco Couch, like, is it comparable to the Spider-Man City Never Sleeps DLC, which we th- assume is going to have impacts on the next game. Yeah, we assume so. We're yet to... Uh, be confirmed, but... <laughs> be confirmed, but it definitely played out that way. No, it definitely feels like you're playing something of substance, story-wise, mm. into building towards that next game. It doesn't feel like you're playing a, a random story. Why is it? Why is it so controversial? So, uh, is it because it's starring a woman? Oh. Close. Uh, I, facial if you, hair. <laughs> if you care about something that's not like a story spoiler, but like a character spoiler, I guess, or something like that, I honestly would be surprised. I'm shocked that you haven't had this spoiled since it's over, every single news site that's writing about this just has the problem, the quote unquote problem in the. Uh, the screenshot for the the news article so um i'm gonna read from where am i playstation lifestyle horizon burning shores review bomb rages on metacritic score lowered to 3.2 following some interesting character developments occurring in the new experience at horizon forbidden west burning shores has been subject to review bombing on metacritic Design Metacritic's accounts, attempts to counter the unjustified low scores, the user score has reached a new low. So yeah, they've got the the, the current Metacritic actual score sitting at uh, 82 across 36 reviews, while the user score with 1,374 ratings is sitting at 3.2. Many of the negative reviews target Aloy's sexual orientation and a <gasps> quote-unquote political agenda. One comic claims that the game has been, quote, ruined by the gay agenda. <laughs> Another comic states that, quote, the love storyline is just there to push LGTB agenda in your face. End quote. Very few of the outright zero scores talk about anything other than the small moments shared between Aloy and Seika. There's no mention of any performance, visual presentation, or gameplay, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So long story short, here's the problem that people have this DLC. And it's more interesting than this. There is a moment... In the DLC, where it gives you the option, which is very weird, and that's the part I don't <laughs> like about it, um, it gives you the option to like follow a romance with Seika or not as Aloy. Mm. I personally think it's shitty for that. For I didn't like it when I played it, and I was playing. I played this very quickly um, before all this shit You're crunching popped it, yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, I fucking crunched this in a day. So I, when I got to the moment, I was like. I don't like this, but not in the, like, I don't like this because they're pushing a gay agenda on me. I didn't like it because the moment is, feels weird when they give you a choice. And I'm like, why is this a choice? If you want to make Aloy canonically uh, gay, just make Aloy gay. <laughs> like, what's <That's>, that? <laughs> like, I don't know why. I don't think choice. it makes her not gay. I think you have a choice if you want to pursue that character or not in a romantic sense. Yeah, it's just weird, like, because it then also it's just okay. Well, if Seika's going to go through to the next game, which they're building her as a prominent, is it going to be? DLC. Is it going to carry over your save file? And depending on how what choice See, you I, made in that terrible. moment, that's terrible. That's it, it completely affects the storyline of the next no, game. It does, it should, that's the thing; it doesn't affect anything. It's just like if you want to write a, a story where Aloy's. Or is it they banged one time and it's like going <laughs> to no, be awkward? This game. No, they very much share this whole like. Rome, if you choose yes, which I did, of course, you because it feels more in line with the way Aloy had. Th- this is the problem. Aloy, up until that moment, I don't know if you can 
feel it or this will make you as you play the mm. rest of the DLC until you get to this moment feel it They've, they're very much writing the scenes where she like there's like a, a chemistry between them that, yeah I can yeah. tell yeah. I had a hunch like yeah <laughs> so they write it like that that's why when the moment comes up and it starts like you can tell that they're, they're building towards one of them like asking or being like hey do you like me I like you that it feels natural because throughout the rest of the DLC you have like already felt that but then the game pops up with a little fucking thing and it's like like follow your heart or don't or something I'm like why like you've been writing the character this entire DLC a particular way everyone knows who isn't fucking homophobic the correct choice here like are you leaving in the other choice just so those fucking dickheads yeah i don't know both? why you would have that choice unless it would have an impact going forward you know because yeah. you could play your i i can only i can totally see you playing your ally like she's completely focused on the mission she doesn't want to like I don't, do any I personal just, shit you is know what I mean? horizon that sort of game i know it's an rpg but as far as like aloy as a character and the core story beats so it's not a choose your own adventure. There's a there's a core there's a core narrative here. You don't get choices over major I, moments. I think there were some choices, <laughs> not but they not weren't very impactful. Ones. Not no. like they didn't really have any effect. No, um, like you could make certain remarks to the sun king at the start of the game and that kind of stuff. Remember? There's that whole moment where you can side with one the girl or the guy in that like clan or whatever. I think yeah. that was a side mission or some shit. But the any of that sort of stuff has absolutely no effect. But I'm like, if you want to write a character to have a romance going forward in your story, it's not choice. It's just you're writing yeah. a romance. <laughs> like you're just writing a romance into your character. Like, very weird. So yeah, I I personally thought it was shitty that it, they made it a, a choice and felt it was weird. And then when all this started stuff started happening, I was taken back because I see all these people popping up Twitter. I see it starts getting review bombed. I'm like, but. The game, Gorilla already was nice enough to give you the option to say, no, <laughs> I'm straight. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, like, but that doesn't change the fact that, you know, I thought about it. <laughs> there was an option. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, Very fucking weird. Man, what is it with PlayStation uh, revealing the characters aren't straight in DLC? No, no, it's like a recurring... <laughs> okay, I think that said, the last... Can't the, put it in the main game because, you know... No. Left Behind didn't make it the choice, so give it that. <laughs> that's true ellie canonically gay <laughs> but they didn't do it in the proper the full game yeah yeah true so yeah so i was like yeah leaving the deal here can't yeah. wait for the god of war ragnarok deals here see the interesting you're talking about this controversy and everybody's talking about it the the comment that kind of struck in my mind that i saw on twitter was someone saying do people care about dlc because i've seen barely any bit people talking about the horizon dlc I reckon that that if they release the stats for every game, that majority of people who like the I reckon it's less than fifty percent of people who played Horizon will play the DLC. I I would say under fifty percent. Hmm. Probably. So so the majority of these people getting pissy about it were probably never going to play the DLC anyway. They just saw the headline and were like, "Yeah, they saw the headline, saw somebody- they read the summary or whatever." Like half an or something tweeted yeah. about about it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Never chosen to get upset. Worked up and upset. Because the woke agenda. The, yeah. The woke agenda. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. I know. I'm keen to finish playing it, so uh yeah. so that's coming. As I said, I don't I don't know. Like it's, it's all new, but I don't really think that's a spoiler. I'll be interested to see. I do think the best part of the DLC is the last mission. Is that okay? Th- as far as I was concerned, I know that G- Gorilla did this whole like it's only on PS5 because the DLC is not on PS4. That was the, the old, yes, uh, that's the true. Big talking point, and the reason they gave was, oh, we've got like this clouds, we got clouds because there's a lot of flying in the game, and the clouds are like really um hard to do, so we can't like put it on PS4. Which I remember reading and being like. I don't know what the fuck it. This sounds like absolute bullshit, but whatever. Um, no. I think the Dylan, reason the, the truth is there's so much water in this. Yeah, maybe you that's know? maybe why. Too much water is you a know? problem, right here. They so. had to take the poles out of Spider Man. So if you've got so much water in this, you know, it's a good point. It's difficult. Good point. Um, I do think the last boss fight, which is the largest scale boss fight, I think, at least as far as I'm aware, in the Horizon games, um, maybe that's a reason why. So yeah, useless. We'll see. Question: Is there a block button? 
I can't remember. I can't remember either. But I feel like there is, right? I don't know. Doing, I had the stupid dude the, with the homing combat? missile thing. I'm like, is it just dodging? Can I block in any way? No. Yeah, I can't remember. No, I just so, ran and dodged. Just looking through the menu. Dodge rolled or whatever. <laughs> like sl- spam circle and yeah. run. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, continuing on the horizon for a hot second, press start rights. Gorilla has confirmed Aloy will return in a new horizon <gasps> adventure. Shocking. Shocking news indeed. Gorilla Games has announced the departure of its studio director, Angie Smets, who is moving into a huge new role as head of development strategy at PlayStation Studios after nearly 20 years with developer. In the announcement, Gorilla has also confirmed it's working on more Horizon adventures featuring Aloy, stopping short of outright stating whether we'll see her return in a fully-fledged sequel or more Burning Shores-esque content for Horizon Forbidden West. It also mentions the online Horizon project, which we already knew about, quote, these past two decades, it really have been an absolute dream. I feel privileged to have worked alongside some of the smartest and coolest people in the industry. I'm so grateful for everything I've learned alongside the other gorillas. We have accomplished so much as a team and are incredibly proud of all the games we've shipped together. Uh, end quote from Smiths. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, nothing of that's shocking. We the, whole, the online one, for a while, people thought the co-op online thing was meant to be this game and then this game is its own thing so the online co-op thing is going to be its own thing horizon 3 being a thing is the most non-news news thing you could get about i found the most interesting thing about all this is the fact that uh, angie smets has moving into head of development strategy which is a major role at playstation she yep. has like one of the higher up roles um so now now playstation is basically just all headed up by gorilla games <laughs> people, people. Gorilla people. <laughs> Yeah, like that's, which uh, not negative. It just it's sort of it's it's a huge positive, I guess, for Gorilla as a well, company. You know, Herman just yeah. bringing in people that he trusts to help yeah. him. So yeah, so soon it won't be PlayStation Studios. It'll just be Gorilla Studios. Gorilla Studios. <laughs> we we'll just slowly bring them all. The up. Gorilla uh, One. Come yeah, soon. Gorilla One. Yeah. Bring them all across and do what you need to. <laughs> Uh, talking about studios, PlayStation has acquired Firewalk Studios. This is also a weird news story when I saw it pop up last week because I was like, didn't they already do that? Anyway, uh, Press Start writes, PlayStation has announced the acquisition of its 20th studio to the PlayStation Studios roster, welcoming Firewalk Studios to the family. After having already entered a publishing partnership with Firewalk in 2021 to work on a yet as yet unannounced AAA multiplayer game, PlayStation has just decided to bring them into the fold for good, noting that Firewalk shows their, quote, passion for creating inspiring worlds grounded in exceptional exception gameplay. Exceptional, I guess? I don't know. Um, the announcement on the PlayStation blog was accompanied by a letter by Firewalk's head of studio, Tony Shu, and the game director, Ryan Ellis, saying, quote, Every once in a while, you get to have an adventure. Over five years ago, we jumped at the chance to set up a new studio and build new IP from the ground up. Recalling on our own favorite times with games, we found a Firewalk Studios around the idea of delivering memorable moments. Those the bleh, those amazing had to be their times shared with other people. Our goals to deliver these shared moments to players uh, of joy to players around the world. Uh, end quote. So yeah, I remember like talking about this studio and the partnership, but in my mind when this popped up, I was like. Wasn't like wasn't that already a thing? Like, I don't no. Know. From memory, <laughs> they announced their partnership at uh, opening night live last year. Yeah, uh, because they're like a studio. They have a bunch of, like Call of Duty devs. They have or a bunch like of that. devs, but they're a brand new studio. So. They're a brand new studio, um, but they had like people who'd worked on a lot of like first person shooters games, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, um, and they're obviously working on a PlayStation thing. I. You know, I guess PlayStation must be pretty confident in whatever game they're building. Yeah. Uh, seeing as they're going to, they bought them outright. Um, but then they did the similar thing to Haven Studio. So, uh, with a similar kind of project. So, mm. um, it's kind of, it's a, yeah, it's kind of a smart way to do it, I guess. You're like, strike up this partnership, give them a year, see how they do, <laughs> see how they're doing. And then a year later, when you're ready to fully commit and say, yep, what you're working on, we're, we're, we think is going to be we're a commit, hit yeah. and we're, we're committed to you. We're, we're welcome to the team sort of thing. Rather than just buy them straight up and then two years later releasing a game and being like, fuck, you guys suck. We had such fun. I mean, <laughs> you know, PlayStation's always been like that though, you know, wanting to <laughs> build relationships before buying them. Yeah, yeah. Sort of Very thing. Very different so. to the Xbox. Right? The Xbox uh, thing where they just throw their checkbook at anybody and everybody. Yeah. 
Blue and Run. then they don't release any games afterwards, you know? Yeah. Works for them. Well, I, well, actually, I don't know. It probably is. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> they keep doing it, so it must be. I don't know. You, know, you ask the Xbox fans if this strategy has been working. <laughs> yeah. Um, they've got... What just release? Something? Minecraft. No, that's on PlayStation. Never mind. Um, moving on. <laughs> so on the PlayStation blog, last news story of the week, Humanity, available day one as a PlayStation Plus game catalog title, out May 16th. Uh, so Mark McDonald is actually produced it at Enhance, right, suppose, saying, move over, International Pickle Day. May 16th has a new number one to claim to fame. It's a launch day for humanity. The best thing about this sentence is learning that May 16th is apparently International Pickle Day. Uh, better yet, it's available day one as part of PlayStation Plus Games Catalog May lineup, available at no additional cost to PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium members slash Deluxe in Australia. Whether you own PS5 or PS4 or and or a PSVR 2 or PSVR or TV only game, I want to craft your own levels or just sit back and enjoy some action platforming and puzzle strategy this year, May 16th, is going to be more than just National Piercing Day. It's National Piercing Day, too? What the fuck? Um, anyway, the trailer uh, is insane. I remember, so Buddy shared this in the chat last week when the trailer dropped. I was at work, and I'm just looking at the thumbnail going, why the fuck's there a dog there? Like, what's the, the thing? And then I watched the trailer, and I was like, okay, so the trailer's actually just as weird as the thumbnail, so that at least adds up, and the, the thumbnail wasn't out of context still and if you read the article it raises the question so why the doggo well yeah. i mean why not done it's a good point it's a good point but considering the relationship between dogs and humans in real life and the story we want to tell it just felt natural if the humans in the game have lost their own will mind and soul who would want that to follow without questioning it a dog yeah so this game which people may remember have seen in different things for a while always looked very weird it was just people running around in these areas and yep you can never quite figure out what the game was like assuming it was a puzzle game but they were like hey from the people who made Tetris effect and rares and stuff here comes this game with a thousand humans on screen or thousands of humans just doing stuff um and now they're like you play a dog because we like the dog and um the dog is going to lead the humans and you're sort of just like leaning these lemming style humans around to get them from one place to another while solving puzzles along the way. I guess that's the game. Is that the game? <laughs> yep. All, all I know is it looks absolutely weird as fuck. So I want to play it. <laughs> it has a dog character um, that you play as. Uh, a, uh, what are they called? A sh- a sh- what's Sheba. It? Shiba, yeah, that's it. Um, a Shiba dog, and they're cute. So, yes, I would like to play the game. It doesn't have a name, the dog, it says here, I just realized. So, no. So, you can name whatever you want. Name a few dog. And, uh, yeah. And they end the post here saying, so keep an eye out for more info and videos in the coming days leading up to May 16th, which this year is not just National Barbecues Day. I'm not sure if this studio is like, Trolling and just making up <laughs> national no, days. No. So here's every national day that falls on May 16th National Mimosa Day, National Drawing Day, National Piercing Day, National Waiters Day, National Barbecue Day, National Sea Monkey Day, <laughs> National Biographers Day, mm, Horse Rescue Day. And it's also taking place during National Stationary Week. I didn't realize there were so many national days at, at any and all times. I mean, that's not even getting to what month, you know. The, May is also National Barbecue Month, National Bike Month, National Hamburger Month, National Get Caught Reading Month, National Photography Month, Els Darlow Syndrome Awareness Month, Golf Month, National Military Appreciation Month. Better Speech and Language Month, National Deck Safety Month, Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, National Lyme Disease Awareness Month, Lupus Awareness Month, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and National Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month. My favorite one, and you just read out, is the, was it National Save a Horse? 
Uh, horse rescue day. Horse rescue day. I like the idea that we're just leaving the horses up until this, <laughs> up until May 16th. Eh, it's May 15th, mate. I know you just got yourself wrapped around that fence. But if we wait a day. If we wait a day. The- yeah. Because we'll get the full support tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's National Horse Rescue Day. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. Uh, yeah. Keen to play that. PlayStation Plus. Very good. Uh, PlayStation Extra slash Deluxe, I guess. Not yep. essential, but uh, it's cool to see that they're adding more games to that. Like they, they have been every, day I one. guess every like couple months, they, they, they do one. Has like, some sort of deal. Yeah. Yeah, some sort of deal on that, which is good to see, yeah. Help make the money, um, the money you're spending on those extra tiers, like, work out to be worth it. Also, shout out to Extra, because I didn't have to put the disc in my PlayStation to play Horizon oh. Burning. Horizon Forbidden West. Didn't you? Thank you. Oh, you just re-downloaded the... Yeah. From the, the tier, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Was Chia Extra? Yeah. No, it was Essential. I think it was Extra. Extra, yeah. yeah. So there you go. So we had one last month as well then. So that's one this month and then one in May. Yeah. Yeah. Going to roll. Are we going to see more of them? I hope so. One a month would be great. It would. All right. That'll do it for this week's episode of Playing Them Explosion. Let us know any comments, questions, concerns you've had about anything we discussed this week on the show. You can do that at explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter, explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. If you like this episode and it was worth a dollar, head on over to our Kofi page, explosionnetwork.com slash support. And um, I will not be on this week's upcoming episode, of Arcade Couch, but listen to that because I'll have my thoughts of Star Wars Jedi Survivor on that episode <gasps> um, at some point. In, so check that out as well in a couple days. Oh, no. It's out Monday. Monday. So more than a couple days, but yeah. Uh, and my review will be out on explosionnetwork.com as well. So do that. When? Until next week. When? 1 a.m. Uh, th- Thursday. 1 a.m. Thursday. 1 a.m. I will not be awake to respond to any questions. <laughs> uh, until next week, remember, every trophy counts. <laughs> <laughs>